I'm guessing the phrase great value and flagship Luxo sedan don't go together in your head. But if you spent much time with this guy, they might get a lot closer. Let's drive the 2013 Lexus LS460 with the F Sport package and check the tech. Now, with this LS in F Sport trim, who's Lexus going after? Clearly not BMW, they don't even do an M7. But that leaves the S Class in its AMG version, and of course, Audi's 8 in the S trim. Lexus has always been known for a very fine touch on precision and luxury and nuance. But are they still top of the stack on tech? Inside, all Lexus, and especially the LS, scream high-tech in a 1970s Japanese way, which I offer as a compliment. Lots of buttons and indicator lights, crisp high-tech gauge faces, a lot of blue lighting, and a vaguely masculine touch. The same things I might say of a Technique's quadraphonic receiver. You navigate the lanes of this big widescreen with this, the Lexus Remote Touch Controller. I'll be honest, the novelty of it has worn off for me since its introduction a couple model years ago, and I now find it fiddly and imprecise. Under my hand, at least, it's just a lot of overshooting when I'm trying to cursor to something. So, of course, you can fall back to voice command, which is generally excellent in this LS in terms of comprehension, but kind of old school in that it generally requires button and beep parsing for each part of an address, for example. Enter an address. Enter an address. Searching California. Say only the city name or say change state. San Francisco. San Francisco. Rear cam is standard, but front cams, all around cams, and a variable view rear cam don't show up here. Again, somewhat dated. Media choices, however, have all the modern hits. AM, FM, HD with tagging, sat radio, USB plus iPod, Bluetooth streaming, and of course an optical drive. On top of that, you have Lexus version of Toyota's groundbreaking Entune apps. Here they call it Enform. Yelp, Open Table, Pandora, Bing, iHeartRadio, and Facebook Places. The latter, I think, is unique to the Lexus side and probably the least relevant. 19 speaker, 450 watt Mark Levinson audio is a Lexus hallmark, but it remains an upgrade on the LS460. Lexus was a pioneer in fancy rear cabins, and on this one you can get shiatsu massage rear seats with butterfly headrests, recline, dedicated rear heater and air purifier. But all that second row luxury in a car that isn't a long wheelbase doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Do an L for that. Lexus, of course, builds engines that seem to come out of the Rolex factory. And this one's no exception, even though you can't see any of it. 4.6 liter V8, no tricks, no blowers, no turbos, no hybrid. 386 horsepower, 367 foot-pounds of torque, gets this guy to 60 in 5.4 seconds. That's moving 4,360 some odd pounds and still delivering 1624 MPG. Everything goes out through an eight-speed automatic, and either rear-wheel drive like we have or all-wheel drive optional. Now on the way in the LS, you're totally aware of the smoothness of it. Right there with Audi, it's one of the smoothest engineered cars out there. They've dialed out almost all the noise, vibration, and harshness that the auto industry goes after as a basket of bad guys. On the other hand, it therefore has a certain softness almost. Uh, we were just driving the BMW 750 against this car, which we've got another video on head-to-head, -head, and this is much more of a finer, softer, lighter input type vehicle, even though it's meant to be a very sport trim version with this F package. Now, like many cars in its category, we've got a couple sport settings, a normal setting, a couple of comfort settings. You may not find a huge difference between the ones that are in one end or the other. Like the two sports, mm, you know, I could use one. Same thing for comfort. But it's all software, so why not give people more features that they'll pay for? Even as an F-Sport, the power is somewhat buried in this LS until you go looking for it. And you still won't mistake it for an M car. When pressed and in sport mode with manual shifting and the lowered adaptive suspension doing its firmest, the big Lexus still feels like a fine car in performance mode more than a serious performance car that's also luxurious. I actually think that makes sense, certainly for an LS. 
No head-up display or night vision available here. Blind spot tech, though, is standard, as is lane departure control and collision avoidance that can flat stop the car at up to city speeds if it spots something out there that you don't, like a pedestrian. All right, here's my take on the LS460. In the F-Sport trim, it's a hell of a value. 72.8 was base. I threw every option at it. 16,000 and change for the ultra luxury package, and I barely got over 89,000. Compared to the Germans, that's a steal. The LS460 F Sport slots a notch below AMG and M in terms of meanness. It's a nicer performance flagship, and for most, it's a smarter buy in terms of MSRP and depreciation. Lexus has the best app system in its class. Buy one of these because you like precision, comfort, and performance. But when the AMG car pulls up alongside you at a light, wave him on.